All right, um, now we have another problem. Now it seems like the ester and then the hydride should have the same reactivity, because they both have an oxygen next to the carbonyl. They both have an oxygen next to the carbonyl, so it seems like they should both have about the same stabilization. But that one's attached to another carbonyl. Right, and we have to figure out why that makes a difference. Because there's even more resonance. So there's like two oxygen, that oxygen can donate. Oh, because alkyl groups are, we had talked before last semester that alkyl groups are electron donating. So That's a good point, but this is too far away to really donate too much. So yeah, this alkyl group is too far oh, away. No, I'm talking about the ester. Ah, okay. I think this is still too far away to make a very big difference. Although that's, a, that's, a, that's actually an interesting point, but I don't think that's the most important point here. Okay, I think the first point that you made was, was more important. Remember, how is this oxygen stabilizing this positive charge by donating electrons to it? However, the oxygen sometimes will be donating electrons to the right. There's also resonance structures over here. This is actually something you were kind of getting at a second ago. So, instead of donating electrons to the left to stabilize this positive charge, sometimes the oxygen is going to donate electrons to the right. And that still leaves the positive charge over here. That's basically the explanation for why this oxygen is more effective at stabilizing the carbonyl carbon than this oxygen. Uh, this oxygen can stabilize the carbonyl carbon by donating electrons to it through resonance. But sometimes it'll donate electrons to the other carbonyl carbon. On the other hand, this oxygen only has resonance on one side. This is the point you were getting at when you said there's no carbonyl on the other side. There's no resonance on the other side. This oxygen has nothing to do but spend all day donating electrons to the left-hand carbonyl carbon. So it's going to be much more effective at stabilizing that. So one of the big themes today is something I already mentioned earlier uh, about how important resonance is this term and always looking for resonance explanations. Even if the problem didn't mention the word resonance, we're expected to come up with that on our own, looking for as many different plausible resonance structures as we can. Okay, so um, the anhydride is more stable than the acyl halide because the oxygen can donate electrons by resonance. However, it's somewhat frittering its efforts because sometimes it will donate electrons in the wrong direction. That doesn't apply to this ester, so the ester is even more stable. Okay. All right. Now, uh, how about this uh, amide over here? Now, the amide can also donate electrons by resonance. It also has a lone pair. However, this nitrogen is less likely to donate electrons than this oxygen because... It doesn't want to have a positive charge. Yeah. Why does it want the positive charge even less than the oxygen? Both the oxygen and... Less electronegative. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that when we're comparing two elements in the same row, the big difference is their electronegativity. When we're comparing two elements in the same row, the big difference is electronegativity. Both the nitrogen and the oxygen can donate electrons through resonance, but the nitrogen is going to be less eager to do that. I think I've been misspeaking. So let's try again. Both, so who's going to be more eager to donate its electrons? The oxygen. The oxygen. That's true. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who is more eager to donate its electrons? The nitrogen because it's less electronegative. Nitrogen is more eager to donate electrons. Because it's less electronegative. Okay. It doesn't oh, like the oh, electrons okay. as much. So, uh, so I don't know when I started getting confused, but I think some of the things I said were wrong. What I should have been saying is that the nitrogen, well, let, let's put it this way.
So here we have two resonance structures where the carbonyl carbon has been stabilized by having pi electrons donating, donated to it. Neither the oxygen nor the nitrogen here is too happy to have the positive charge. But who, who is... The oxygen is the most unhappy about the positive charge, because it's the most electronegative. The oxygen is the most electronegative, so it's the least happy with this positive charge. Therefore, this resonance structure is not going to be as important for the ester as this resonance structure is for the amide. Okay, okay. maybe just to, to simplify this one more time, both the oxygen and the nitrogen can stabilize the carbonyl carbon by donating electrons. Um, but who is more willing to donate its electrons, the oxygen or the nitrogen? Nitrogen. The nitrogen is more willing to donate its electrons. That's why this is the most stable. Because the nitrogen is fairly willing to donate its electrons, um, the amide is the, at the bottom of the table. It's the most stable. Why, how do we know the nitrogen is more willing to donate electrons? Because it's, it's further to the left, less electronegative. Um, okay, so then, so this is that, this part we didn't understand that. Like it compared the Cl, OCH3, and NH2. Yeah, that looks like exactly and what we were talking about. Yeah, we it talks about like. So you got the charge wrong there. Oh. That should be a positive charge. Okay. Okay. And it, it said the whole thing about electronegativity, but then it also said the poor orbital overlap with the chlorine right. pi bond orbitals makes it least electropositive. That's the same point I was making before about the size difference. In order for this to donate electrons. Um, the way that the electrons are really donated, donated uh, the rate the resonance actually occurs is by overlap of p orbitals. But because the chlorine is so much bigger than the carbon, there's not a very good overlap of their p orbitals. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher dot com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box by the way I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website thanks